Hey, it's Nash from Astronomy. In mid-2022, I switched from my Canon T2i DSLR, which I've used for t over 10 years, to a dedicated Astrocam, specifically the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. And one of the first questions that people ask me when they find out that I have this camera is, how do you feel about the square sensor? I think my opinion on the square sensor has changed since I first started using it. And I think originally some of my thoughts were influenced by what I've read online and I've heard people say about the square sensor. Uh, people thought it was weird, it felt a little unnatural because it wasn't rectangular like we're used to. Uh, but I will admit that after I've used it enough, the square sensor actually grew on me and I kind of like it. And the more I use it, the more I actually like this camera and it has nothing to do with the actual square sensor at all. But I thought it would be a cool experiment to see how the field of view differs between the APS-C sensor of my Canon T2i versus the one-inch square sensor of the 5T3MC Pro. The two objects we'll be looking at are the Andromeda Galaxy M31 and the Elephant's Trunk Nebula IC1390. Both images were taken using the exact same telescope, the 8060ED apochromatic refractor along with the 0.8 flattener and reducer. So it had a focal length of about 288 millimeters. And what you'll see in the comparison is just how much more the APS-C sensor gets versus the one inch square sensor. But you'll also notice a lot of differences in the noise and the quality of the image itself. So let's take a look. So here's the little experiment I did with my shot of M31 taken with my 5T3MC Pro and my Canon T2i which has an APS-C sensor. So the larger area is the APS-C sensor is much larger than the middle square part where you'll see the 5T3MC Pro shot of M31. You can clearly see the difference once I zoom in to the sides here, to the edge of the 5.33MC Pro, where that meets the DSLR. And you can see that the noise level is very noticeable. So this is uh, the DSLR. It's pretty noisy on the left side. It's cooled and less noisy. And you can also see that there's uh, some green noise, a lot more green noise in the fire, in the DSLR shot on the right side and none at all on the left side where the 5.23MC Pro did its thing. So this shot is just stacked. Uh, I didn't do any kind of post-processing to try and even out the background or anything. So, so this middle part what you see is what you get just stacking um, through AstroPixel processor the shot of M31 with my 5.23MC Pro. Uh, looks pretty cool. But you can see you sacrifice a lot more of the for field of view for more clarity, um, and I think you know it takes a little bit getting used to, but you can you can get used to it. Uh, it it's not that much of a deal. Although M31, I have to shoot diagonally so that it fits my field of view. If you look at the example of the Elephant Trunk Nebula, which I shot with the Canon T2i. Uh, over a year ago. So this is the field of view using the exact same camera. Uh, I used an enhanced filter, so a 60 millimeter uh, Apo refractor. You can see the Garnet star on the bottom left here. Uh, it fits very nicely, gives me a lot more room to crop. Uh, I think I cropped the very edges, but you can still see how wide it is. Now if I go to the shot with the 523MC Pro, again I cropped just a tiny bit of the edges to get rid of uh, some of the stacking artifacts, but this is what you see. You can see that the Garnet Star is just out of reach. It wasn't in any of my uh, any of my shots at all, so it wouldn't have made it here anyway. But you can see the difference between the two in the field of view. But you can see that the shot of the elephant's trunk with my Factory 3 MC Pro is a little bit sharper. Um, don't mind the color differences. It's just me playing with my uh, the color palette while processing these. So I hope you enjoyed the little experiment I did to show you the field of view using the exact same telescope but two different cameras and two different sensor sizes. And of course the shift will be much more different if you're coming from a full frame but there are both APS-C and full frame censored astrocams so this is just a comparison with this one inch square sensor. And one more good thing to share about the images I've taken with this camera is that I actually have two prints hung up in an actual gallery, uh, more specifically the Harvard Ed Portal in Boston, Massachusetts. In this picture, you see that I have two shots hanging up, the M31 shot and my Heart Nebula shot. The M31 taken from the 5T3MC Pro, and 
it's on a 16 by 20 or 20 by 16 inch photo print. It's a similar size to the two canvas prints that you see behind me of the Eclipses. And they were printed for that frame with barely any cropping. And it, it fit really nicely in that 16 by 20 format. So it's about, uh, ratio is about five to four. And on the other side, it's if you wanted to print something square, so it has the heart nebula and there was pretty much no cropping there at all. It just fit perfectly on a 16 by 16 inch frame. And of course you can always take mosaics to get the rectangular format if that's something that's really important to you if you have a square sensor. I plan on doing a more in-depth review of the 523MC Pro. I've had this for about seven months. Uh, I'm slowly working on it and I'll go over how I felt or what I noticed going from a DSLR to this Astrocam. So you won't be reading the spec sheet. I will link to the spec sheet in the description below, but subscribe and come back and see all the things I've learned, I think. It'll be helpful, especially if you're looking to upgrade from a DSLR to a to a dedicated Astrocam, uh, specifically the 523MC Pro. But I think most of what I'll say can be applied to almost any dedicated Astrocam. So until then, clear skies.